world when Jesus was born appears very different to our world today. And in many ways, of course, it was different. But as I read that story from Matthew 2 once again, there's one thing at least that hasn't changed, and that's the reaction of people to Jesus. First, let's note the reaction of King Herod. The wise man then came to Jerusalem looking for the king of the Jews, born. They followed his star. And we read that Herod was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. They knew their Herod. Herod was afraid that this little child would interfere with his life, his place, his position, his influence, and so on. And so he reacted just as he reacted to any in the previous few years, because he killed members of his own family, others who seemed to be threatening his position. So it was totally consistent, this hostility, this desire to get rid of this baby. And so he decided that he would use the wise men to find where the child was and then kill the child. And when the wise men failed to return to tell Herod of their location, he ordered the slaughter of the, every baby boy in Bethlehem and the surrounding area, two years old and under. King Herod was the first of many rulers who tried to eliminate the influence of Jesus Christ and many Christians have suffered as a consequence. Now, not all are like Herod, of course, but today, as down the ages, the claims of Jesus Christ are opposed by those who want nothing to do with him, in fact, want to eliminate him. And so today, they write articles, they write books, they speak. They will do their best to get rid of the name of Jesus, the influence he's had, the church and so on. Hostile hatred today, just as then. In our country, it's not quite like that, of course, but people do want to get rid of Jesus. But in some parts of the world today, our brothers and sisters are being persecuted. So first, we see hatred, hostility towards Christ. Secondly, we see indifference. Indifference. We might have thought that the theologians and clergy of the day, men who studied and knew the Old Testament scriptures, men who knew the promise of the most coming one, the Messiah, someone like King David, but much, much greater, you would think that they would be excited when these wise men came seeking the King of the Jews. Because there was already an expectation at that time that someone very great would be born. Surely the clergy, in their longing for the Messiah, would go and check it all out. After all, they knew where the Messiah was to be born. They quoted this to Herod. So why not go and check it out? Bethlehem was only five or six miles away. So why didn't they? Was it a case that they didn't believe the Old Testament scriptures? Or were they afraid of King Herod? For everyone knew how insanely jealous he was. Or were they just too busy? So many services, so much to do. Or were they really just head believers only? They believed the scriptures, but it hadn't touched their hearts. They weren't true believers. Of course, it's possible to study the Bible to know all about it and still not be involved personally with Jesus Christ. Well, for whatever reason, they were indifferent. They couldn't care less. They made no effort to go and see, let alone worship the Christ. One writer put it like this. They knew the facts and could quote accurately the scriptures, but they couldn't care less about the implications to them nor the response demanded from them. It was sheer indifference. And in my view, there's plenty of that around today. 
Over the past 50 years or so, I've conducted many baptisms, weddings, funerals. And plenty of people in the congregation have had that indifference. They thank you. If you go out of the church door, they may well shake my hands and say thank you for that service. They're grateful for what you've done for the baby, for the couple, for the one who's passed on. But in the service, you look. As you look at the, the eyes that may go out the church door, what you can see is indifference. They're grateful for what you've done, but nothing spiritual has touched them at all. They couldn't care less about Jesus. They don't want him in their lives. Jesus has no relevance to what they think about life and how they're going to live their lives. I see it in baptisms, weddings, funerals. When I visit people in their home, I see it in my own family. I see it amongst my friends. Indifference. It saddens me greatly. So firstly we see hatred and hostility. Secondly we see indifference. And then thankfully, thirdly, we see those seeking. Seeking which leads to finding, which leads to commitment, which leads to worship. There's an important principle stated by Jesus in Matthew 7. It goes like this. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks, the door will be opened. Long ago, those wise men or astrologers began a journey seeking, and the light of nature, the star, led them to Jerusalem. When they got there, they caused a real stir, but the light of scripture led them to Bethlehem. Leaving the confusion of the city behind, they were able to see the star. And when they came to the house, they found the young child and they worshipped and offered gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. They sought, they found, they worshipped. And this act of worship is in sharp contrast to the hostile attitude of Herod and the indifference of the religious leaders. So if we begin a new year, let's pray. Let's all give thanks that Jesus came not just for the Jews, but for all people, us Gentiles as well. That's what we rejoice at the Feast of the Epiphany. And let's make sure that we are among those who have sought and found and worship and want to continue that. And let's not be put off by the hostility of others. Let's not be put off by the indifference of others. But instead, let's encourage those who come to that church door seeking. Let's do all we can. We pray for those who are hostile, we pray for those who are indifferent, and we do our very best to pray and encourage those who are seeking.